And it concerns something you said to me the other day. Okay. Okay, so you went to Dracula, and I, I said, did. look, I want to go to Dracula. And I said, how was it? And you said, it was fine. And then I went <laughs> to it, and what hit me was overwhelming. This is one of the most fabulous movies I can remember seeing in a, since Frozen. I mean, I loved it from, like, <laughs> the first frame to the last. I was yeah. delighted during every minute of it. So I'm trying to understand how it is that you d downplayed the magnificence of the <laughs> film. <laughs> you know what? That is actually something I do quite often. It is a habit of mine. I get tremendously excited about things. I, I am really, really excited by movies. Movies are my life. So when I go and see a movie, I am rarely disappointed. I will always find something beautiful in that movie. And I guess it's a good thing. It means that I'm constantly entertained. But when I'm recommending films to people, it's very difficult for me to discern whether or not it's a good film or whether I'm just overly excitable. So I always think that it's, it's better to... Um, to give a little bit of a disclaimer and not oversell it too much. And that way you're, you're absolutely delighted when you see it. Well, that's essentially what happened. I mean, it, it began... And of course, I, I love the story, right? I mean, the Bram Stoker's um, great novel, which is, by itself has an amazing story. I mean, here you had this kind of Puritan Victorian who writes this novel warning all the uh, women of England against the, the evils of uh, uh, losing their virtue. Mm -hmm. And it became the most salacious book of the first quarter of the 20th century. It spawned an unbelievable <laughs> genre. And here we are now uh, in the 21st century. And this beautiful movie comes out, which was basically a prequel to the whole Drac Dracula yeah. story. And it makes him a sympathetic figure. But for mm -hmm. reasons that I find very interesting... Yeah, no, I, I found this whole film, as you said, from start to end, I had a blast. I had a blast, not just from the story, but also visually. It was beautiful. The effects were beautiful. And it was, you know, it was really engaging. Everything was lively. It was exactly what I wanted a Dracula movie to be. Oh. And the ending, I mean, let's not give anything away because we want people to go see this film. Um, but I just, I had a lot of fun with this. So let me ask you this, um, and I really want to get into the meat of this film, but so, during the, uh, I'm just just occurred to me when you said that during the whole um, movie, were you anticipating that at some point he would turn into a bat? Because <laughs> he never did, right? Well, I mean that was interesting because it seems that he turned into many, <laughs> and that's fascinating. I was <laughs> like, oh, I'm like a million of them. Um, but it was a really cool technique because it meant that they could do a lot visually in you know, showing all of this this um, whirlwind of bats flying at people, and that was cool. And it sort of it was you know. How in comic books, how when you want to show a character going from there to there really fast and you just show lots of lines or you show so, sort of a blur, they were able to do that really well in this film just by showing a whole bunch of bats moving at once. It was very effective. I liked it. It was a little, a little counterintuitive because uh, for us in the past, Dracula's always been very literal, right? I mean, yeah. we'd sort of like like leap out the window, become a bat and fly or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, but in this one, he, yeah, he became part of the swarm, you know, he became part of the species itself, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, there was a very interesting turnabout that takes place. In the original novel, uh, Dracula is the other. He's, he's the eastern, he's the weird, mysterious, dangerous force from the east threatening the internal society of England. Uh, mm -hmm. But in this one, because it's a prequel, a very interesting sort of turnabout happens. I mean, in Transylvania, you have the sort of embedded bourgeois culture that we see at the opening with the Romanian uh, Eastern Christians all practicing their, their faith and trying to live a happy, peaceful life. And then the other, in this case, is the Sultan, you know, the Turk, you know, yeah. representing another foreign religion, which is a very interesting turnabout. It's, it's, it's like the relativization of the other, right? Ah. The other is different in, in every age. And so this one, the other was the Sultan and the, the people you identify with were was was uh, Vlad and, and the right. people he's trying to protect. All these people, the people he was fighting to protect, um, they 
they he loses them he loses his connection to the people that he identified with most so he does become the other in a sense because there's no one left for him to identify with right. you know he, the reason he did this the reason he sacrificed his mortality um and everything he held dear was to protect these people and suddenly he loses that capacity um which really sets him up in this very uh interesting position so i think you've just identified the thing that i found most compelling about the movie was the impossible moral choices he faced yeah. and and that's very difficult for us as, as viewers right it's like you, you just kind of assume at the outside that it's a bad idea to become dracula <laughs> Yeah, correct. But as you follow the moral dilemmas he's facing, initially, of course, it's like the sultan, uh, he's a man of peace, and the sultan arrives and says, look, I want a thousand, a thousand of your, uh, of your uh, boys and also your son. And he's like, mm, okay, what's the highest value, you know? Um, peace or not. And so then he's ready to give up his son because he figures, well, I was given up too as a child. But then he changes his mind at the last second and, and slaughters the five people. And you're kind of vaguely happy about this decision, right? Yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. No, I was like, yeah, Jack, yeah. kill them all. Right. But then 10,000 soldiers come and he has to kill them. But, but look, he has to acquire the power to defeat them. So he goes to the monster in the cave and says, give me power. And, and you're even kind of okay with the fact that he drinks the blood. Because yeah. the condition is, <clears throat> if you can go three days yeah. and not drink any more blood, then you go back to normal. So you're kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I mean, these people are terrible. We have to defeat them. Yeah. So you're kind of good with them drinking the blood. But then the three days run out, and suddenly another 100,000 soldiers come. He faces the same problem again. You know, the time's running out. He still needs power. Now he makes this fateful decision of, of sacrifice, as you say, sacrificing his mortality and becoming a monster himself. Now, <clears throat> to me, this is very difficult. Yeah. You know, this is like choosing less, the lesser of two evils. That's what we face every single election day. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Jeffrey. <laughs> but, you know, there's something even more profound. It strikes me that this is a picture of a pre-capitalistic age before people understood <clears throat> the gains from trade essentially you know uh, you had to kill or be killed you had to take or be taken from you mm -hmm. know and, and that was great and i suppose that this is the sci-fi or not sci-fi but it's the fantasy mm -hmm. uh, medieval drama right but it's beautiful because it embeds us in this pre-capitalistic world where we don't understand about association we don't understand about exchange and look at the the moral hell in which we find ourselves as a yeah. result. There's no other options in this world, right? <clears throat> Everything, there's only a certain amount of fixed resources. Nobody apparently knows how to create wealth yet, <laughs> really. <Yeah. laughs> so so we, have to, we have to loot or be looted from. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, is, this is grim. And it made me appreciate um, modernity um, mm -hmm. for the fact that we've figured out ways to get along with each other and to find value in each other through commerce. And, and uh, Naomi, this is even true of the other, right? Mm -hmm. and we've learned how to, um, more or less, f you know, we've figured out ways in which we can um, be a diverse community and still, you know, have, uh, maintain our dignity without slaughtering each other. Th that's what overwhelmed me about the, the big themes of the movie. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, that's such a, um, a relevant issue for today. It really is. At the moment, you have mainstream media that is basically portraying other countries um, that we might not associate much with. Uh, they're portraying them in this very homogenous way. Like, everyone in these countries is exactly the same. Uh, they're all the other. They have nothing in common with us. And it's just not true. It's just not true at all. And you find that the more that, I mean, first of all, the, the um, technological revolution has opened up media, which means that over and over again, <coughs> what I mean, we see that it's simply not true um, and we have so much in common with people all the way over the other side of the world and we didn't even realize it before. Um, it's a pre-capitalistic age and I think we need a much more intense appreciation of what it means to find value in each other as human beings through the commercial, uh, uh, commercial world. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I think the movie, I, I know the movie didn't set up to make a, 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 an anarchist libertarian point, <laughs> But I think it sort of really did. I mean, I just had it. I was overwhelmed. Uh, oh, here's another thing, um, Naomi, that, and, and there's no way we can sort of plunge into it. But you know what it made me wonder? 
It made me wonder if our sense of what is right and wrong uh, flows out of our commercial landscape to such an extent. Um, like, like Vlad had a sense of what was right and wrong, like at the outset, oh, yeah. but it kept getting scrambled in his brain uh, as he went along because he didn't have the option of choosing anything really truly right. I mean, everything became mixed up. But in a world of, ex of exchange and like civilization, you know, as we know it now, we have uh, a clearer sense of what's ethical and what ethical. And more importantly, we have the opportunity to choose. Right. You know, something uh, along those lines that I found very interesting, and I know, again, they didn't set out to make this sort of commentary, but this is definitely what I read into this film. Um, the moment where, first of all, Vlad, he is the hero of this community. He is the hero. He is the yeah. best fighter. Everyone adores him. Everyone is grateful for the, what he's providing to them. Um, and then suddenly they realize that he has some sort of supernatural power. He is just one extra step above everyone else and suddenly he's vilified like is that not an, an analogy to today's society where you have these people providing so much value to everyone so much wealth so much protection and suddenly um they become vilified because they're just too far beyond <laughs> people's reach and it doesn't matter that they're still you know this this they're still providing value this Vlad, he was saving them he was saving them and the village really ostracized uh him they, they tried to burn him up didn't they exactly that is really insightful naomi i have to congratulate you for that insight that blew right by me <laughs> very impressive i like it but i just got a text message that there's apparently a new disney film coming out and that <laughs> makes me crazy because um, and they're just, as you know, they're just getting better and better. Of course, it's just, you know, I mean, goodness, you know, Disney has such a beautiful heritage, but, but it's getting more and more um, wonderful, you know, to, to watch these, you know. I can't uh, wait. So Ooh, I'm, you I'm, and I have to absolutely I'm, rush to the opening and, and we'll <laughs> dissect it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll talk about how it's actually a commentary on, on capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is a commentary on capitalism. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sammy. Wonderful to see you. This has been wonderful, Jeffrey. Bye. Bye-bye.